So welcome to imaginary numbers. So imaginary numbers, this is something probably totally new to you. Um, imaginary numbers uh, were brought about because of situations like x squared plus 1 equals 0. When you solve that, you subtract 1, everything seems great. Then you get x squared equals negative 1, and you square root and square root. You get x equals a positive and negative square root of negative 1. Well, we don't mathematically know what this is. The square root of negative 1, we have no clue. So mathematicians are like, well, we got to make it something. So they made it i. So the square root of negative 1 is i. And this is a pure, the pure imaginary number is written in the form bi, where b is the coefficient, and it's the real number, so any number that you already know. And i is the imaginary part of it. So we got the steps here, and I'm just going to work number one out and work the steps. So we're going to break up the square root of negative 9 as a square root of negative 1 times 9. Now I'm going to go one step further with this, and I'm going to break it up in negative 1 times the square root of negative 9, or square root of 9. Square root of 1 is i, and the square root of 9 is 3. So that becomes 3i. And 3 is your real number part, the coefficient, and i is your imaginary. Number 3, we have the square root of negative 5. So let's break it up into square root of 1, or 1 times 5, negative 1 times 5. And break it up even further to the square root of each part, square root of negative 1 times the square root of 5. The square root of negative 1 is i. And the square root of 5, let's see about if there's a perfect square that can divide out of 5. Well, we probably should talk about perfect squares. So those perfect squares mean like 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3, where 3 squared is 9. 4 times 4, which is 4 squared, that's 16. And we're going to continue this pattern. 6 squared, 36, 7 squared. And we're going to continue till we get a little bit over 100. These are the typical perfect squares that you have to remember. 10 squared is 100. 11 squared is 121. 12 squared is 144. So when I ask, say, for perfect squares, I'm thinking 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, and 144. Those are my perfect squares. And so when I say, is will the square root of 5, is that one of the perfect squares? No, it's not. And can I divide 5 by 4? Yes, but it's a decimal. I only want to divide out if it divides out as a whole number. So it does not. So we cannot simplify it further. Now, if that's confusing, hopefully number 4 will help us. So number 4, let's break up the square root of negative 80 into the square root of negative 1 times 80. Square root of negative 1, we know what that is, but let's break down that negative that 80. 80, is 80 a perfect square? No. Uh, 81 is. Does So then now we think, does 80 divide by 64? No, not without a decimal. Not without a decimal. Does it divide by forty-nine? No. Eighty does not. Does it divide by thirty-six? No. Twenty-five? No. Sixteen it does. So that's what we're looking at. Sixteen, and it is sixteen. Oh, that's not right with a highlighter. Sixteen times five is eighty. And the reason why we do this is we're going to break it out. We know what the square root of negative one is. That's i. We know what the square root of sixteen is. Now that's four. And we don't know what the square root of 5 is. So this is going to become square root of 16. I'm going to write the real part first, then the imaginary. The square root of negative 1 is i, and then the square root of 5. And that is the simplified answer. Now, at some point, you'll be able to skip some steps, I think. You won't have to do all of those steps to get there. And one of the reasons why we do this is because of solving. So like number 7, we are solving to your operations, opposite operations for the problem to solve. Square root, remember you have the square, that's where your solutions are. So then you have to have two solutions when you square root. You have a positive and a negative. And the square root of negative 81, that's a negative 1 times 81. 
and that breaks down into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 81. And again, you probably don't have to show all of these steps. We have the square root of 81 is 9. That's a perfect square. And see, we see over here, 81, perfect square, good. And then the square root of negative 1 is i. So our two imaginary answers are a positive 9i and a negative 9i. So let's take a look at number 9. Order of operations, i got to subtract 15 first. Divide by 4. Twenty Negative 24 divided by 4 is negative 6, and we square root, square root, don't forget your plus minus, x equals positive negative, we get square root of negative 1 times 6, 6 is not a perfect square, and the nearest number that's not bigger is 4, and 6 doesn't divide by 4 without a decimal, so that is not, there are no, we cannot simplify the 6. The only thing we can simplify is the square root of negative 1, which is i, and then we have the square root of 6. Let's take a look at number 12. So I have adding 1. I need to multiply by the reciprocal. So that's negative 54 over 2. Negative 54 divided by 2 is negative 27. Square root, square root. Don't forget the plus minus with that. The square root of negative 27 is negative 1. 27, biggest perfect square that can divide out of that is 9. That's 9 times 3. And we can go a step further with this. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of negative 1 is i. And then we don't know what the square root of 3 is, so that stays the square root of 3. So there are my two solutions, a positive 3i square root of 3 and a negative 3i square root of 3. Now let's jump into, I think we're going to do 15 and then 20 and be done. So products of pure imaginary numbers. So one thing we have to know, so we know now that i is the square root of negative 1. What happens if we square i? So if you ever see it in a counter a square, you square both sides of the equation. Square and square root are opposite operations, so those cancel each other out. So i squared, anytime you see that, can actually be replaced with a negative 1. So this is super useful that i squared is an actual, it's a real number, negative 1. So let's take, let's take a look at number 15. We multiply our real parts, so 4 times 7 is 28. And we multiply our imaginary parts, i times i. Our real parts, 4 times 7 is 28. And then i times i is i squared. And if you're like, man, how does that work? Well, here's a little side note. Something you're coming in with, you should remember what x times x is. x times x you should know is x squared. The reason why it's x squared is we have like bases, x's. And we're multiplying. Multiplying like bases, you add the exponents. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So you have i to the first and i to the first. Those are like bases, the i's. So you add the exponents to i squared. Now, what we just learned was i squared equals negative 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this i squared with negative 1. Now that's 28 times i squared, so it's really 28 times negative 1 which is negative 28, and that's our final answer. Number 20. When you have the square roots of three different, uh, or you have three different square roots, what I would do is I'd multiply them all together first. So I'm going to put it back underneath the same square root, and let's multiply them. So 24 times 3 is... 60, 80, no, my goodness gracious, 72, 70 negatives, yeah, 72, and then times negative 2 is 
negative 144. And that can break down into a negative 1 times 144. And 144 is a perfect square. That's 12. And the square root of negative 1 is i. So this just turns into 12i. All right. So hopefully these notes helped you out. Please come to class if you have